time we were talking about um, linear block codes. And today we're going to talk about um, <coughs> or excuse me, we're talking about factor graphs and some product algorithm. Uh, we're going to take uh, factor graphs and combine them with linear block codes to talk about low density parity check codes. Since then, LDPC codes have proven to be the, um, um, the best known class of error corrected code in terms of um, approaching the, um, the Shannon capacity of channels. So we're going we're gonna to look at uh, a simplified class of LDPC codes called the regular LDPC codes. regular about them? Well, what we do, uh, when we talk about LDPC codes, let's remind ourselves what we were talking about last time. So we said, um, <coughs> uh, if we have a code, we can express the symbols of the code as, var as variable nodes. So these are variable nodes in a factor graph. symbols of a code word, and we can express the parity checks as basically parity constraints. So um, each row of the parity check matrix H corresponds to one of these parity checks. What we do is we connect the parity check, these parity check nodes, to variables um, the variables participating in that parity check. In other words, the locations in each row of H. So this, let's say this represents the first row of H. Um, in fact, let me, let's, let me write down the, um, the Hamming code example that we had last time. So here is a Hamming code. There's the parity check matrix of a Hamming code. What we need is for, um, if, I, if I have a code word, I'll take the dot product of that code word, or equivalently, I'll multiply by each transpose, uh, the dot product of each code word with each row of H, and I require that to be zero. Um, so what we showed is that this is equivalent to the following. If I wrote seven variables, like so, representing the first through seventh bits of the code. And the three rows of the parity check matrix, let's call that one, two, Three are represented by these factor blocks at the bottom. And what we do is we connect the factors to 
to the variables where we see ones in the parity check matrix because um, this row, uh, this parity check, each row of, of, um, of H represents a certain check on the parity of the code word. Um, and this check is actually independent of x4, x6, and x7 because these zeros appear here. So it's only a function of x1, x2, x3, and x5. And what this check says is that x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x5 mod 2 has to be 0. So we can connect these. Uh, similarly, h2, what we read off here is that x1 plus x2 plus x4 plus x6 mod 2 has to be 0. Like so. And here we read x1, h3 represents x1 plus x3 plus x4 plus x7. Has to be 0. So there is the um, there is the factor graph representing the code part, and remember we also have the observation part. So these factors um, enforce the constraint that each row, each uh, parity check has to be satisfied. These um, constraints represent the discrete memoryless channel observations f of yi given x. So this is the complete factor graph representing um, a, um, a Hamming code. Now, how does this relate to low-density parity check code? Well, um, this scheme for representing the, um, <coughs> the parity check matrix as a factor graph is independent of what particular code we're using. So low-density parity check codes are um, linear block codes. Therefore, they have a parity check matrix. And therefore, we can represent them also in this way. Now, it turns out it's more convenient to start with the factor graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the factor graph, and from that, we can obtain the parity check matrix. And in fact, what we're going to show is that we're going to use the sum product algorithm to decode these, these codes. So therefore, there's really no point in writing down uh, the parity check matrix. So what we will have Our n variables up here, n code word variables. And down here, m check, uh, n, m parity checks. So um, this is a linear block code. So um, how many information bits can I send with this? So uh, remember, this is this is a representation of the parity check matrix H, which contains n rows, excuse me, n columns and m rows. M uh, the number of rows in the parity check matrix, if I translate this back to G, the generator matrix has N columns and K rows. And what, what property must K and M satisfy? Implicitly, we initially started talking about this in terms of n minus k rows over here. 